uh, so friends uh, in today's session we will be looking at the concept of internal input impedance and internal output impedance of an amplifier although i discussed this concept uh, in bjd okay with the help of my post now i am trying to explain this concept uh, for jfet with the help of the video so that you can understand in better way uh, and on, remember one thing uh, this is an amplifier it may be a C common emitter amplifier that means this amplifier can be made with the help of bjt uh, with the help of jfet with the help of mosfet etc the it, it really doesn't matter uh, what you are using but yes the concept remains same for all so we'll now just look at the concept so basically resistance which i had drawn with red color this is your internal input impedance of amplifier and i had named it as r1 and the resistance which i had drawn with the help of green color uh, it is an internal output impedance of an amplifier and it is represented by r2 okay so now we will look at this uh, this part first see we will look at this part this internal internal part internal uh, sorry input input resistance okay so i will draw it first um, so friends uh, as i had explained in my post that this um, internal input impedance of amplifier that is here r1 should be as high as possible okay i will explain the reason why okay let's say this is a setup okay and this rs means nothing but the source resistance r source resistance and the source resistance means the maybe a uh, impedance offered by wire or basically resistance of wire okay because you know that wire has its own input resistance or basically wire has its own resistance okay ideally the resistance is zero but but practically it is around few ohms like 20 to 50 ohms and all it depends so now just consider that, that uh, we are giving one millivolt of signal okay from vs that is we are up, our input signal is one millivolt and we have to amplify it to one volt okay uh, you right now just don't focus on this particular part okay i will erase this just think just see that we are applying one millivolt of signal and let's say our r1 is 20 ohms and the inter input impedance of fire is 100 ohms now these both are in series so that's why the voltage drop won't be constant although current would, would be constant okay current would be constant but voltage drop across this resistance would be different so basically the voltage drop across this resistance would be high let's say it is around 0.7 millivolts okay and here the voltage drop across this resistance would be around just 0.3 millivolts okay so as you can see we had designed our amplifier so that it would take one millivolt of signal and then amplify it to one volt but at the input of amplifier we are just getting 0.3 millivolts of signal we are losing this 0.7 millivolt of signal okay why because our rs here our rs is greater than r1 that is uh, sorry our r1 here is uh, the in internal input impedance of amplifier okay that's why you had heard or basically you had read in the definition of transistor that uh, the internal input impedance of amplifier or basically transistor should be as high as possible so our r1 should be as high as possible okay i hope you understood this concept now okay now i will be explaining you case 2 let's say uh, huh, now i had kept uh, this r1 as Two, uh, sorry, I'm writing it down. Two kilo ohms, okay. And RS is hundred ohms. So now let's say you are again applying one millivolt of signal. So obviously voltage up across RS, in this case would be around just point one millivolt. And voltage up across R1 in this case would be around uh, let's say point point nine millivolt. Obviously this would get added and you get one millivolt of signal. So now uh, you can see we are transferring the maximum power that means maximum voltage at this r1 that is 0.9 millivolt why because we had this an amplifier so that it would amplify 1 millivolt of signal to 1 volt although we are not getting 1 millivolt of signal at r1 but still 
it will amplify it properly 0.10 millivolts and 1 millivolt there is a slight difference but it is acceptable this amount of change is acceptable so that's why our in input impedance or input internal impedance of amplifier should be as high as possible okay and obviously you are clearly seeing that our r1 uh, r1 is greater than rs okay so i hope you understood the concept of internal input impedance of amplifier uh, now we will be seeing the uh, out uh, internal output impedance of so as we saw the internal input impedance of amplifier should be as high as possible now we'll look at the output impedance of transistor uh, of oh, sorry of of, of of any amplifier maybe it would be an op amp bjt or any fets so let's say our r2 is our output impedance of our amplifier and rl is the load Im uh, load resistor or basically load impedance okay and obviously as i said earlier that we are designing our amplifier in such a way that it would amplify 1 millivolt of signal to 1 volt now consider that our output impedance that is r2 is greater than uh, this rl okay so obviously uh, the voltage drop across r2 would be high okay voltage drop across r2 would be high then voltage drop across rl right okay now this will create an issue that means let's say we want one volt signal at the output but we won't get one volt of signal maybe we will get a uh, around 500 millivolt of signal at the output since r2 is greater than rl therefore volt uh, not 500 will for your better understanding let's say i am considering 400 millivolts of signal so that means 0 0.5 0 0.4 volt of signal you will be just getting 0 0.4 volt of signal at the output okay while 0 0.6 volt of uh, signal would be consumed by this r2 resistor basically output impedance of amplifier so you won't get uh, you know the proper amplified signal that you wanted okay now we will just see that what if we uh, decrease the r2 okay now let's say that we are decreasing r2 and we are increasing rl basically in, in this case we are considering that our load resistance is greater than the uh, the output resistance or basically output impedance of an amplifier okay now obviously the voltage drop across r2 is less than voltage drop across rl that means uh, this okay you are uh, basically you are getting let's say now around 0 0.1 volt of signal the drop across r2 is around 0 0.1 in this case and drop across rl would be 0 0.9 9 volts this is 9 volts so now as you can see that we wanted that 1 millivolt of signal should be amplified to 1 volt and we are getting around 900 volt or 900 millivolts so now we can say that our amplifier is properly amplifying the signal although there is a drop of 1 0 0.1 volt but it is quite acceptable for some cases okay so now we had designed our amplifier properly so what we had learned is that uh, our output impedance that means our R2 over here should be as less as possible okay our output impedance of amplifier should be as less as possible okay so that's why now i will explain you the con uh, the definition of transistor in detail uh, as i had explained in the post of bjt transistor i will write this spelling okay so this is the spelling of transistor trans means to conduct and ester is a resistance okay trans means to conduct and ester means resistance okay resistance offered so i will explain this concept of transistor okay since jfet uh, bjt and mosfet are all transistor obviously uh, the basic task of the uh, transistor is of amplification that means let's say uh, this may be any amplifier okay and let's say you are applying uh, some signal and you are getting some signal so as we know amplifier has its own internal impedance okay and it has its own external impedance okay 
let uh, just check and I will draw with some different color so you can understand it in better way this is red color indicates that this is an uh, internal input impedance of transistor and yellow color indicates that this is an output impedance of the transistor so basically what you are doing is that you are giving one signal okay you are sorry uh, yeah you are giving one signal okay that okay and amplifier is conducting okay that signal and giving some uh, you know uh, amplified form of that signal that means you are uh, that amplifier is taking signal with one resistance that is r1 okay and it is am giving you the amplified form of that signal okay with the help of another resistance that is r2 okay that's why uh, we we named it as transistor trans and ister why trans means to conduct you are conducting this signal okay to and you are getting some amplified form and ister means to offer resistance with the help of this resistance r1 and r2 okay you are conducting that signal that's why a transistor is also known as an amplifier i hope you understood this concept if you like it then please do like share and subscribe my channel thank you